Dear President, Prime Minister, so sorry to disturb the right order of speakers, uh, but uh, due to circumstances, I was uh, only able to confirm my presence uh, late uh, yesterday evening, so I'm pleased and I want to show and to express uh, not just uh, the solidarity, but uh, the real commitment to the ICD. Ladies and gentlemen, as it was said before, we are living in confused times. At least we may say it in this wording. But uh, there is more. And I want just uh, to uh, relate to the pre-last uh, Eurobarometer, where only 32% of the 27,000 Europeans questioned about which is the actual state of play do have still trust in the European institutions. But on the other hand, as always in life, the glass can be half full or half uh, empty. There are 65% of the same Europeans, they still believe in the European project. So how to close this gap? And uh, in times of confusion, mistrust as well, one of the questions we have to raise is, uh, which is our proudness about what was uh, already achieved, not in static terms, but which is the kind of hope we can uh, put forward. We are living in confused times, but is it the first time in mankind's history? And uh, time to time, we think that we are facing for the first time a new situation. I give you three examples where, in fact, it's not the case. In uh, the city of Antwerp, important port in our country, in uh, the 16th century there were 160 nationalities living in the city of Antwerp. Nowadays we are thinking that's the first time that there are a lot of uh, different uh, people coming from around the globe, they are living with us. The second example is, without Erasmus program of the Union, there were at least uh, as many people traveling from the University of Krakow to Salamanca, from Salamanca to Leuven, and from Leuven to Montpellier. And the third point is uh, that uh, reminding uh, five centuries ago the empire of Carlos V, it was in fact a prefiguration of the actual European Union. There was no central seat. There was a lot of autonomy given to a lot of... Uh, of people all over the, that time Europe. So the only point I want uh, to stress is that, uh, of course, we are challenging and facing new times, but uh, there were already in previous periods also similar times. Some reflection on the global human rights uh, issue and how to uh, go through cultural diplomacy to the better human rights. By the way, I have not to repeat, human rights are essential but only one out of the three pillars of our values. Democracy, as a matter of fact, is a collective right. Human rights are inalienable individual rights. Whatever the state of play of democracy may be, human rights are individual rights. But uh, I say it in this wording that, uh, as well, democracy and human rights, they have to be enshrined based on the rule of law. Because without uh, the rule of law implementing in each of our countries, I think that uh, we will fail to go for, may I say, an enhanced or improved human rights approach. By the way, it is surprising, overlooking history, that only from uh, 94, 64, 74, for the first time, the concept of human rights was uh, bring forward, nor the French Revolution, nor the Enlightenment, nor any religion was uh, before, in fact, uh, focusing on the people in terms of human rights. And we have always uh, to go for and to look to the essentials. And the uh, three principles, we have to remind it, on the, the rule of law are, in fact, uh, our governance has to be based uh, on law not on regulation, but on a reference clear for every people. Secondly, when there are some disputes, we have uh, to have an independent 
and neutral judiciary. And thirdly, in fact, uh, the human rights uh, are to be based on clear legal binding text. No confusion, no arbitrary uh, approach. So when time to time, the European Union, and more than time to time, is really questioned, we have to uh, stress that uh, I think for the first time in history, there was not one single member state country, but there is a global union enshrining and going for a binding foundation for the union in terms of human rights. But we are not still longer in the Westphalian period, where in fact there was a kind of consensus. Every member state has uh, to be yeah, the one to be responsible for its own state. For the first time, we have, uh, in fact, uh, the evolution from a Westphalian approach to a European democracy. And so it is uh, important to notice, just uh, three years ago, the Union was improving the idea that uh, it is not just a question, member state by member state, but there is a common space, it was already referred to, a common space of human rights. By the way, unity and diversity, space and place, I think that we have to think in terms of space, uh, because otherwise we will uh, lose some opportunities. So from the European side uh, and prospect, we have to go indeed uh, for global human rights. As part of the globalization, questioned in the meantime, yeah, there was the idea that globalization would uh, go for a solution for everything. But uh, in uh, my view, we have to go for not only a sustainable globalization, not just an economically and ecologically a sustainable globalization, but uh, in fact towards a human rights globalization based on values and based on standards. The state of play today, I know there is a large feeling of defeatism, there is a, a lack of hope, there is a lack of prospect, and there are good reasons uh, to assess it. On the refugee team, there were a lot of uh, important speakers already uh, going for uh, and making reflection on this issue. I'm always surprised that in economic terms, the Union and other countries are saying that we are not able to go for some hospitality for some even million of people. Let's make uh, a simple calculation. Uh, when we would have five million refugees, it's 1% of the European population. In fact, the problem is not an economic or a budgetary problem. The problem is a problem of uh, integration, of uh, accessibility in terms of uh, how to use, uh, not the right word, absorption. I'm reluctant to use this word uh, when it is about the people. And so we are in a kind of schizophrenia, as a matter of fact. We know in 2050, the actual 27 or 28 European member states, we will be together only 4% of the world population. And at the same time, there will be a need to have 50 million people coming from outside of the actual European Union to do what? Just to preserve our way of life and our standards. But uh, many times we are closing our eyes and uh, we see, and let's uh, say it in uh, clear words, that also inside our Union, there is a uh, real infringement on the basic values of our political union, of our union on um, values based. When I'm looking to Poland, there is uh, a real infringement on uh, the, not just the liberty of the press, but there is a real media concern we have to show. When I look to Hungary, it is shameful, in my view, that uh, Hungary is not able to accept 1,258 refugees, uh, you can discuss, you can question the system of quota, as a matter of fact, but in terms of uh, 
accessibility and just in hospitality that uh, we have to stress it. Further on, looking to Turkey, I was for years rapporteur for the Council of Europe to Turkey, and there were a lot of achievements, uh, the seven or eight reform packages for Turkey, but in the meantime, I think that there are to be more than simple concerns. All economic players in Europe and also outside of Europe are going rightly to Iran. But we have to assess that uh, in the last period there were 3,000 uh, executions and uh, m for most of young people and also of women. And as a matter of fact, closing our eyes to what uh, happened in Syria, I think that uh, there, this is the real assessment, how we are dealing with the uh, human rights issue and global human rights. So the question is to know, in a positive uh, prospect, uh, how to promote by cultural diplomacy, not just the protection of human rights, but uh, the human rights issue as a dynamic process. And in my view, it cannot be only achieved by institutional means. Certainly, not only at central level of Europe, central level of nation states, member states, so we have to do it uh, from the ground floor. It has uh, to be also contribution of the local people, because they are the first to be confronted with uh, the issue. But uh, on the other hand, it would be an illusion to think that only institutions can achieve. And for this good reason, in terms of uh, achievements and how to use cultural diplomacy, I think that uh, all actors in our society are to be involved. And these are, in fact, the two dimensions of subsidiarity. The institutional one, where the local, the regional, the state, the European, the world one, they have to go in a functional coalition to try to go for some solutions. But the horizontal dimension of subsidiarity is the one where we are giving trust, a place and responsibility to our actors in our society. So it is, I think, a fair business to also involve our economic entrepreneurs. And of course, we are searching for wider and larger markets, but there is not any contradiction to raise the point that we have to question ourselves. It is not forbidden to question, not to judge each other, but to question each other on the implementation of the human rights. There is, of course, the important, uh, may I say, responsibility of the cultural actors. The cultural actors, uh, the artists, the sports people, the humanitarian organization, the students, the networks, the academia, the NGOs, and, by the way, often city diplomacy can be part for in fact, the achievements on the larger cultural diplomacy as well. And uh, as important it may be, I think that education to dialogue and education to intercultural dialogue is uh, very important. One word uh, lastly about uh, the place of the media. It was already made reference before uh, towards the media. We are facing a total new situation. You know that uh, some decades ago, even 20 years ago, it was uh, one too many. And uh, in fact, the citizens were just uh, the recipients, the receivers of the message of the information. But nowadays, the citizens, the people, are in fact uh, not just the receptors of information, but they became the producer of information. And one consequence of this new landscape is that it benefits not only democratic forces, but is also at the disposal of extremist groups, including terrorists. The current terrorist situation couldn't be possible without the access and misuses of new communication technologies. The same can be said uh, from populist forces. Without the access to the net, they could find more difficulties to propagate their narrative. So I want to make clear that uh, in terms also of human rights, in terms of uh, the basic values, the media and certainly public broadcasters have to play an important role. They have different roles. They have the information function, the civic forum function, the community function, the account accountability function. 
And the idea of journalism as a fourth estate, as power keeping the other powers in checks and balance, remains essential for all broadcasters. We may speak about uh, a kind of watchdog role. So, and then, of course, the new online environment and generally the social media are provoking us to deal with the matter of the integrity of the information. I give you just one example. Uh, when, uh, during the election campaign uh, in the United States, there were 900,000 messages confirming that Pope Franciscus was sustaining candidate Trump. There were only 300,000 who were denying it. So when you make the balance, there were more than two-thirds. They were really convinced that there was, uh, in fact, a, a sustainment from that side. I want just to give this example to say that uh, in the new era we are in, and in terms of democracy, in terms of uh, citizens' empowerment, citizens' education and information, we have to focus fully on the truth, the truth information, and the integrity of information. Lastly, I think that uh, human rights, global human rights, are not uh, in contradiction with what uh, the social fabric can make. And uh, to uh, refer at new to uh, the city of Antwerp in 1993, it was the cultural capital of Europe. And the motto was, can culture save the world? The answer at that time was yes. Probably it can be one part of the answer today as well. And uh, anyway, when we are fair to each other, when we recognize the other, not just as an alien, but as uh, the other part of ourselves, then I think that uh, in terms of uh, global strategy, it can only be based on a human-centric global approach. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for mentioning uh, the role of the medias. But in this context, I have a real question. Uh, as far as I know, I think in nearly all the European uh, states, we have public broadcasting. But the public broadcasting is in general going in the same direction like the private one. You can pay for it and you are getting the opinion. And there's nothing public in this sense of truth you mentioned. I think, why is this happening, my dear? May I answer immediately? Uh, so this is in another capacity as uh, chairman of the Flanders Belgian Broadcaster Company. I think that uh, as uh, people want always to accommodate uh, to the others, but not always the best, I think there is a real evolution that public broadcasters are evidently not focusing on their main task, information, education, initiating of the debate, uh, dealing with uh, the matter of uh, real pluralism. Yeah? It is always difficult to go in terms uh, of neutrality and objectivity. But I was, uh, in fact, uh, launching uh, an, may I say, a report inspired by the BBC to see in which way the public broadcaster can be not a different broadcaster, but has to go for other standards and has to be a reference for the private media in terms of quality, integrity, and the added value of a public broadcaster is uh, that uh, he has, uh, in fact, uh, to make clear the added value of the public broadcast. I agree with you that there is uh, an evolution, but referring to the 10 strategic lines of the European Broadcasting Union, it's very clear. The idea of the public media service, what was not at all, in fact, uh, related to the approach of many public broadcasters, has to be at new, put forward, and I think this is essential. There was, uh, lastly, an interesting uh, analysis, in fact, a large uh, study, where it was proved at new that there is a strict correlation between the state of democracy and the quality of public broadcasters. 
I was uh, for four years rapporteur for Turkey for four years for the Russian Federation. And I can only say that uh, for me it was important to assess on behalf of the Council of Europe that uh, when you don't have real qualitative integrity oriented public broadcasters, I will not say that it will be an impediment for democracy, but there is a strict correlation between. So it can only be an appeal to go for the better and to renew the approach of the, in fact, fundamental task of public broadcaster. Because a public broadcaster is not click driven. Time to time, we think that uh, the more clicks you have, the more important the news is. And by the way, time to time, it is the case. And uh, even false news, yeah, not the truth, as long as it is repeated frequently, people think that this information is more re relevant than other information. So we have to be careful, and I see that there is a great responsibility for public broadcasters. Yeah. Well, I think uh, overlooking the uh, 48 countries of the EBU, I think that uh, we have to assess that, and now I have to praise the Nordic countries, that they are doing better than some southern countries, yeah, in terms of uh, public media service. And uh, so uh, we have not, like uh, Mr. Jansha was saying, you cannot stop some phenomenon. We cannot decide from Brussels on, nor from Geneva, from the EBU on, to say you have to do it in this way or another way. We have only to go for, I can only repeat, for the highest quality and the highest integrity of the information. Thank you. We must conclude there, actually, in the name of time. So please, uh, a warm round of applause for Luke van der Branda. Thank you so much for Thank coming. You. Thank you. Thank you.